Hello, um, my name is Renat. Uh, I'm gonna give you a short update on the project called Mistral. Um, and um, I'll tell you what we've done uh, so far, and especially what we did um, in the uh, Stein release and what we're planning to do in the next release train. So let's get started. So just uh, briefly about what Mistral does. So Mistral is a workflow service with the REST API. Uh, what it means briefly is uh, basically, you can create a workflow um, uh, in a YAML language, in a YAML compatible language, so basically it's a DSL based on YAML. Uh, you can upload the workflow definition uh, via the REST API uh, into the service, and then you can um, run work workflows with, with Mistral. So it provides you with the scalable uh, workflow execution mechanism. Uh, it runs workflows uh, in a scalable, reliable way. And basically, uh, a Mistral workflow can call uh, any third-party APIs uh, through uh, the mechanism called actions. So it's basically uh, some kind of useful job that um, the workflow can do at a certain point um, of the execution. And um, uh, of course, since Mistral was born as part of the bigger OpenStack family, it's tightly integrate with, integrated with OpenStack. Uh, it uses Keystone for authentication. It has uh, a number of built-in actions to call OpenStack APIs. Uh, uh, it includes pretty much all the core projects of OpenStack. Um, but speaking honestly, Mistral can be used also without OpenStack, and there is a lot of uh, production, production installations of Mistral uh, that had, uh, have nothing to do actually with OpenStack. Uh, just to give you a, a quick sense of what uh, a Mistral workflow, workflow can be, so this is just a small part of a real workflow that we use um, at Nokia for NFV, um, uh, for our NFV stuff. So basically this workflow um, is uh, part of the deployment mechanism of, a ne of network services. Um, yeah, uh, just a little bit about the project background. So it, it was started in 2013. Uh, so it's been about uh, five and a half uh, years from now. Uh, for the last release, uh, there were uh, 52 contributors. Of course, the number of active contributors is uh, a little bit small, and smaller. Um, so, and you can also see some of the uh, uh, big users of Mistral um, who, who use Mistral in production. So now I'm going to tell you some uh, noticeable changes that we've made. Um, um, in the recent time, so uh, particularly in, in the Stein release. Uh, so for about like two year and a half, we've been uh, consistently improving uh, Mistral performance. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, some big enterprises uh, started using it for some real uh, big use cases. And um, when it all started actually, um, we realized that the performance was not the strong side of Mistral, and um, we've had to um, make a lot of improvements actually to make it more production ready. So in the in the time cycle, we again made a series of improvements. So uh, it improves Mistral performance like two, three times, depending on the, depends on the uh, it depends on the use case actually, uh, because um, workflows can be absolutely different and um, the configuration of the workflow itself plays a significant role here. Um, if you're familiar with um, some, some functionality of, of, um, of Mistral and uh, with uh, Mistral workflow language, so specifically we improved significantly um, the join mechanism, so it's basically when you, you have multiple branches in the workflow and you want to synchronize them at some point, you have to use uh, the mechanism called join. Um, we also improved the workflow completion logic because it was um, uh, based on the peri on periodic scheduled jobs. 
and there were some uh, delays, some uh, pretty bad consequences um, from that architectural decision. Uh, we consistently, uh, we keep consistently improving uh, Mistral engine memory footprint and um, over the last uh, year, I think the memory footprint like in, in average was reduced like by the order of magnitude, I think. So um, on our real workflows, for example, we've seen um, uh, memory footprints close to like five, six gigabytes now. Um, it never exceeds uh, like 500 megabytes. So um, another thing that we made um, is a new cool feature called workflow execution report. So uh, it used to be a big problem actually uh, to debug real workflows. So for example, uh, you start a workflow and it's big and it has a lot of nested workflows that we call conventionally uh, sub workflows. And something actually happened. So something failed uh, within, deeply within that uh, huge uh, workflow structure. And um, it took a lot of actions actually to um, understand what the root cause of the failure. Um, basically, you had to uh, do a lot of actions uh, either with uh, using the uh, command line interface, you had to copy paste many, many IDs and so on and so forth. Or you could use the visual tool um, that, uh, that we also have called Cloudflow, but even using Cloudflow, it's not that simple actually. So now uh, there, is, uh, there is a new command that allows you to do this kind of uh, quick analysis uh, pretty easily. So I'll, I'll show it separately on, uh, on the separate site. So uh, we've also fixed a huge um, number of bugs and some of them were um, really annoying when uh, it came to running like really, really big workflows with uh, high parallelism, uh, multiple parallel branches. And um, those uh, errors are like really painful to catch. Uh, so, but uh, we made a lot of improvements and so uh, now it's much more stable. Uh, just a few words about this workflow execution report feature. So uh, what, it, what it can do basically, for example, you have a workflow uh, like shown on the right hand side here in the slide. But uh, some of the tasks actually are associated with sub workflows like this task five on the screen. And something failed and you want to report uh, what is wrong with this uh, workflow execution. So you can just do this simple command and it prints you uh, on the screen like a quick um, look of what happened. So by default, it actually filters out all the successful tasks. So, and it uh, leaves only like the error branches, uh, error paths in the whole picture. So, but basically what it does, it prints the entire workflow execution, no matter how many nested workflows you have, how, how deep they are. So, um, but at the same time, you can uh, limit the depth of what you, you're gonna display on the screen. So you basically can uh, look at only like the zero level uh, workflow execution or like two levels, uh, it's, um, it's up to you. So in this is supposed to be like a very uh, useful tool when it comes to debugging uh, like the real failures. Um, yep. So what we're planning to do for train, uh, first of all, uh, there is still a big problem with this join uh, mechanism that I already mentioned. Um, although we made a lot of improvements related to it, uh, it's still like the uh, worst place in the system, I think, as far as performance, because uh, basically, um, I can quickly show this slide. Um, if you have a really big workflow and uh, like that second task from, from the bottom actually is a, is a join. So it synchronizes multiple branches in a huge, huge workflow. So the mechanism related to uh, how this workflow check works, I mean, the workflow check means um, is this task ready to run already depending on 
uh, what uh, what happened down um, upstream in the workflow so with the, with the inbound uh, connections. So this mechanism was. Um, it is still very inefficient. It's based on a recursive uh, search over the database, and um, because of that, it's very, very expensive. So, but the good news is um, we already have a prototype um, on review right now that new needs to uh, that is supposed to eliminate this problem almost like completely. So, uh, the performance boost will be at least like two orders of magnitude. So that's uh, something that we're planning to do as far as performance. And the other thing that we want to do is improve um, Mistral component called scheduler. Uh, scheduler is something that schedules periodic jobs. And um, it used to be like a very central mechanism in the, in the whole uh, Mistral arch architecture, but not anymore, but still pretty important. And this mechanism actually uh, is kind of a bottleneck uh, when it comes to uh, scaling the Mistral engine tier. So if you want to add a lot of Mistral e engines, uh, this component prevents you from doing that smoothly because um, the uh, load on the database increases uh, significantly with uh, uh, every new engine instance. So the plan is to uh, make it more lightweight, uh, so that it doesn't use the data database um, that intensively. Uh, so, and again, the good news is that uh, the prototype is already uh, merged and it actually happened back in Rocky. So, but it needs to be just uh, completed properly. It needs to be integrated with the uh, rest of the system. Uh, it needs to be tested and so on and so forth. And the third uh, big thing that, um, we'd like to focus in train and uh, probably beyond train uh, is uh, we'd like to significantly improve usability of Mistral. Uh, what I call usability here includes a lot of elements like a much better documentation because I'm personally not satisfied with Mistral documentation. So it pretty much covers all the uh, Mistral language specification, all the features, uh, API, but the way it's structured, uh, the way um, um, it gets you familiar with, with the um, OpenStack concept, uh, not OpenStack, Mistral concepts, um, is not the best, I would say. So um, we also want to provide much more materials like tutorials, how to, uh, to make this use case, that use case, um, so that it's not just, uh, uh, like a specification kind of material, but something that you want to learn and something that uh, you would enjoy. Um, we also want to simplify uh, the installation and configuration process uh, because a lot of new users who try Mistral are not really happy with um, how the project needs to be installed and how it needs to be configured. So. Um, it's not that bad, I would say, but uh, we see a lot of ways to improve that as well. And we also want to improve um, uh, experience of people who want to uh, integrate uh, with Mistral on their own projects, let's say. Um, uh, usually it happens by writing a new custom actions and plugging them in to Mistral. And so we, we have kind of a framework for that. We have a thin uh, library, uh, which is a separate artifact in, um, in Git. So you can download it and you can make it a dependency uh, for your uh, project that implements, for example, uh, the action pack for, for something, I don't know, for working with uh, your specific project or with your specific APIs. And uh, we have a framework for that, but um, again, we see um, a lot of ways how to improve that as well. And um, you can also plug, plug in new uh, functions that you can uh, then within to the workflow language itself uh, into Yakult expression language or Jinja. 
So those are main things that we want to do next. Um, so as far as join, I just wanted to um, make sure that the problem is, is clear. So but basically, I've, uh, I've already covered this. So it's a huge pain right now for some workflows. Uh, for some real workflows, it takes uh, up to like 90% of all CPU uh, spent on the workflow execution. Uh, so it's, uh, it's measured actually uh, based on some real workflows. But that problem will uh, go away soon. And that's, it. that's pretty much it. So uh, we're always welcome um, new contributors. We, we always need help. If you want to contribute to the project, uh, just let us know. Uh, we'll get you up to speed. So and that's basically it. So if you have some questions, you can ask now or later. Can I ask? Sure. Types of workflows. Okay, uh, so primarily, well, um, I'm aware of at least three companies who use Mistral for NFV. Uh, it's basically deployment and termination of network services um, within NFV uh, universe. At least three companies. So um, basically, I would put it this way. Uh, so you need a workflow technology. Uh, Anytime you want to do some kind of, you know, um, orchestration over like a widely spread um, set of resources, I would say it can be pretty much anything: multiple servers, multiple um, um, projects, storages, whatever. And you want to build a process that covers, encompasses all these resources as one process, and you you want to make this process reliable. So. The logical question is, why can't we use just something like Python or, I don't know, Java to write this program and um, go ahead and run it so that it does all the work that we need? But the answer is that some uh, real processes that include uh, this kind of huge complex orchestration may last up to weeks. So, and you probably don't want this, the progress to be lost if something crashed in the middle. So. Uh, workflow technologies allow you to uh, fix the problem in the middle if it happened and um, just continue the process from that exact point where it left over. So um, another successful use case um, uh, that we, we, we know um, is a data center automation. So it's like a soft, complex software that manages the data centers, servers, whatever based on some centers, you know, something is overheated and you need to take an action to fix the problem somehow. So this kind of things. Does it work well across multiple bins or you set up different workflows per bin? Uh, it works pretty well across uh, mar multiple VMs, yes. Yeah. It's, um, it's been used right now in production and pretty successful. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, sure. uh, if someone wants to put a step in a workflow that says get uh, sort of manual approval or get approval from whatever service, yeah. right? uh, how might one go about doing that? Um, you can do it in a number of ways, I think. So uh, there are several mechanisms. Um, one of them is to put the, the entire workflow on pause. You can do it explicitly uh, through the workflow language. And once you decide that something is, is okay, you can just continue the workflow manually, or you can also use uh, the mechanism of uh, asynchronous actions. So it's basically when you just started some action, some job um, uh, through the third party service, and it's up to that third party service when to deliver the result of that action. So in the workflow um, service has to wait till the result is received in order to continue uh, the workflow. So. Okay, thank you very much.